Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Commodity TV and uh, online edition, a new edition, actually, of our online interview series here. And as you see me in a little bit in a leisure closing, I'm on vacation, but this news is way too important, way too large, and way too big from Caledonia Mining. And we have we have with us here Mark Learmans, the CEO. Welcome and good morning to Africa. How are you, Mark? I'm doing very well, thank you. Sorry to, interrupt, sorry to interrupt your holiday. Your hey, friend. that's always, you can always interrupt me with that good news. I mean, that's fantastic. You just issued the news that you want to acquire the Bilbo's Go project in Zimbabwe. Wow, how did you came on that? That looks fantastic. We've been looking at this project since, I think, about 2016. Okay. Uh, we've been through been through various um, iterations, so it's taken us about seven years. Um, but we've we finally got a deal that we, we we think works. So just just to recap, it is a two and a half million ounce resource base. Uh, that's a MNI uh, 43101 compliant MNI at a resource a grade of about 2.3 grams a ton, open pitable. So a very good very good grade for um, for open pit. And then it's got another half million ounces or so. Um, uh, Resort, in, in, reserves, in, in, right? In, no, that's an infer, in, another half million in inferred. Mm -hmm. it's, got a it's got a feasibility study that's ready mm -hmm. to go. Uh, now, that feasibility study um, caters for a, a single step to get to quite a large project. So mm -hmm. from naught to um, 168,000 ounces a year. And that would require an investment of about $250 million. Now, clearly... Clearly, for a company of our size, that would be a very big, big step. Now, let's let's put that in context. I mean, over the course of the next uh, few years, three years, yeah, 2023, 24, 25, we'd expect to generate free cash of about 80 to 85 million dollars, which would just go into the bank account if we didn't um, if we didn't pay it out to shareholders or didn't invest it. But that's so that on, cur on current gold prices, right? That's on the current gold price, yeah. So that puts into context, that's, that would still leave us with a substantial funding gap. Now, critically, one, there are various sort of conditions to this transaction. One of, one of the really important conditions is that we can export the gold from this project ourselves, sell that gold internationally, hold the proceeds offshore, and therefore that means that that cuts through all of the difficulties that we've had in the past mm -hmm. with trying to raise debt funding. So this project being, as it is, um, relatively high-grade, uh, project should be able to support uh, a substantial amount of debt. So that would, so you've got the, the cash that we generate ourselves, the potential for debt funding. That means that actually the the equity component to go the big step, two hundred fifty million dollars, it would be would be relatively small. But even having said that, we don't need to go down that route. Uh, we've done our own assessment of this project, and we believe if the funding isn't available on um, on attractive terms. Uh, to raise that amount, we can we can do a phased approach, which would basically take this project from zero to sixty or seventy thousand ounces, and that might cost a hundred million dollars. And then once that's up and running, then use the cash coming from that first phase to fund the second phase. And that that's very very consistent with the way we've developed Blanket Mine, as you might mm -hmm. remember. Mm -hmm. we, um, we constructed. Uh, the central shaft that cost us seventy million dollars. We funded all of that through internal cash flows, and it requires it requires a lot of discipline in terms of optimizing and maximizing the cash that you generate, and making sure that you invest in ways that, that deliver the money. So I don't want investors to be unduly concerned that we are irrevocably committing this okay. company to going to raise two hundred fifty million dollars. If the ducks are quacking, we'll take it. But if they're not, we'll fall back onto a position which is much more um, much more conservative mm -hmm, fantastic so because this is as i'm a shareholder of your company and you know that a long-term shareholder i was a bit concerned that might be yeah big dilution coming up in the future here but it's it's good to hear that you are not working uh, on stuff like this yeah well, so, me, um, yeah so let me let me i mean I've, I've said this before but just in case people haven't um weren't, weren't paying attention when we when we evaluate projects like this I'm a shareholder too. I'm a shareholder as well, Jochen. And yeah. I want, and I enjoy our dividend stream in the same way you enjoy our dividend oh, stream. Yes. <laughs> and, and, and I want, I want our dividends to go up, dividend yeah. per share to go up. So what we do is we very carefully evaluate the cost of buying these transactions, buying these assets, and how we how we bring them, how we fund the, um, the the development of the project, with a view to looking very carefully what happens to the potential to pay a dividend per share. 
And when all's said and done, when, once you take into account the shares you issue to buy the thing, when you take account of the shares you may issue to fund the thing, we need to see an appreciable increase in the free cash flow per share and hence the ability to pay a dividend. And I, don't, I don't mean a 10 or 15% increase. It's got to, mm-hmm. it's got to basically double, double our dividend paying capacity. Um, and that we're, we're very comfortable that this project, because it's a relatively high growing project, uh, can do that. So we are yep. very cautious about unnecessary dilution. Having said that, having said that, you know, one of the criticisms that we, we do get from, um, from potential investors is that having, having specialized in, in you know, redeploying internal cash generation to grow the asset, we've never given the market the opportunity, the sort of the binary get in or buy or don't buy opportunity to, to try and bring in um, uh, investors who would, who would, you know, we never created the sort of sex and violence story mm. around it. So we've got two approaches and we're just, as, we'll just be very, very cautious and very considered and very judicious in the way we go about this. Yeah, but this is the way how I like it, to be honest, because uh, mining is an adventure already and how you play it with the dividend and very conservative approach. That's exactly what we want. Um, what I saw in your press release, I have it here in my hands, um, is also really interesting. Um, the study um, the vendor did um, shows, let's say, AIC around the 820 dollar level even if i put that let's say to 900 yeah to make it around someone to be conservative you still have a margin of let's say today's price is between 800 and 900 dollars so if if you produce 70,000 ounces you need approximately two three years and phase two is done absolutely absolutely this thing that's super i mean that's easy yeah because it is because don't well Study on it's not, you know, um, yes, the, the this, this is a very high, this is a very high grade project mm-hmm. for an open for an open pit operation and will be highly cash generative, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely, definitely. Yeah. No, that is super. So, next question is, of course, who is behind the Bilbo's Gold project? Because I saw a name like Baker Steel, I really like it. I know a lot of uh, people, yeah, so there. It's a that's a fantastic it's fund in, uh, in the in, in London. Yeah, there are three three names behind it. The the biggest shareholder is, is a gentleman called Victor Gapari, who I've known for, for many years. He's a Zimbabwean. He uh, used to work at Anglo American Corporation, Anglo American Zimbabwe, uh, when it was still active in the country. Um, and he was, I think, for two or three two years or past three years, was a, a past uh, president of the Chamber of Mines in Zimbabwe. So he's a he's a very prominent um, mining entrepreneur in Zimbabwe, mm-hmm. which actually is very helpful because. Um, he, he will he will add a lot of um, weight to our in-country team, mm-hmm. particularly when it comes to um, engaging with government, mm-hmm. uh, where we have to put a lot of effort and time into that. And uh, it, will, it, will be, it will be great to have someone someone on the ground who can do that. So uh, there's Victor Gapari. He will, re- he, will effect- he will become Caledonia's biggest shareholder with about 16%. And then Baker Steel... That they're, they're, they will be taking their consideration as shares and then as a royalty um, mm-hmm. in the asset. So I think they'll be they'll be ending up with about six or seven percent of the large company. But again, as you say, great great to have um, the name of the caliber of Baker Steel on the on the register. Mm-hmm. The third shareholder the third shareholder is um, is a Chinese investor group who um, don't really have any um, any sort of uh, visibility in mining, and so so that's not going to be a name that people recognise. Mm-hmm. So, so for, for, for them, it's like a financial investment. Yes, yes, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, super. So if I recap that, we talk about 170,000 ounces possible gold production per year uh, from Bilbo's. Then we talk about 80,000 from next year, latest onwards um, uh, from Blanket. So you're already then at a quarter million. And then we still have the Mali Green project. How yeah, would that come in? Can, can we say like in probably three, four years, you are a 300,000 ounce producer? Yeah, we wouldn't. What, we, what we'd like to avoid doing is building more than one mine at once. Yep. Okay, so it would be it would be a phased approach, and that's and not we wouldn't want to do more than one man at once. Not not just because we wouldn't want to stretch our finances, but because it um, it would stretch the the management team quite mm-hmm. considerably. And what we know, what we just know from from our current experience in Zimbabwe, is that trying to do too much too quickly uh, becomes quite difficult. So we do mm-hmm. a phased approach. So it would we as you know, blanket is now at eighty thousand ounces a year. We mm-hmm. we put out a press release last week saying we've done mm-hmm. twenty thousand ounces in. Mm-hmm. in too so blanket is now achieving eighty thousand. There may be some potential for upside there as we as we as we do more um, 
exploration on the on the blanket area. Um, uh, Bilbo is 160, uh, either one phase or two phase, and the top, uh, sorry, and the um, the uh, Malagreen asset that could either come after phase two of um, of Bilbo's or in between phase one and phase two. All depends on what the feasibility so for um, for Malagreen looks like. Mm -hmm. Okay, but let's put it that way. The next three to five years, you go really on full speed to build this like to a mid-sized uh, African gold producer. Yeah, that's what we said we'd do. Yeah, exactly. I love it. You always do what you say. That's a good thing. That's why I have invested. <laughs> Very yeah. simple. Um, question, um, because uh, I want to talk about Blanket shortly also, because this is the, the cash can out. Uh, this is the mind who makes everything happen. Also, our nice dividend payment we get every uh, quarter from you. Um, how is it going now? We saw over 20,000 ounces you produced in the last quarter. That is fantastic because if we buy four, we are at the 80,000 you promised us. And also, I would love to know how is it going with the, with the solar uh, power plant? Because that, that should be almost up and running now in August, right? Should be. Okay, well, let me, let me, um, okay. Blanket, as, as you've seen, is is going very well. Yeah. Um, I think I think the, the good thing is that it's completely changed. Now. Whereas a year ago, we weren't blasting, breaking, and hoisting enough ore to keep the metallurgic, to keep the metallurgical plant going full time. Mm -hmm. Now it's, now it's the other way around. The, um, the, um, the, the, met, the, the metallurgical plant is working full tilt. Um, and we're now building up a modest um, ore stockpile, which we will eat into when we increase our milling capacity. I think in the next three or four weeks, we've got a, a vast, a massive new mill, which is in the process of being um, being commissioned. And so that 20,000 ounces that we um, we did in Q2 excludes about one and a half thousand ounces that's sitting in of gold, that's sitting recoverable gold, that's mm -hmm. sitting in a stockpile. So I'm, I'm very confident that we will continue to achieve the 20,000 ounces a quarter um, and, and achieve 80 for the for the year or there there or thereabouts. Solar solar is actually is actually there. It, it, it just needs plugging in, and we have uh, some short term um, I wouldn't call them problems, just some procedural matters to go through in terms of connecting the solar project. Uh, to the grid, and it's actually only, it's, all it's got to do is just go across the road, but it still needs a, it still needs a grid, grid connection, and that is, that's probably going to take another three or four weeks. Uh, so mm -hmm. it should be done should be done sometime in in, in August. Uh, so that has that last bit has taken frustratingly longer than we expected, especially because actually the the, the, the solar farm is sitting there, um, linting in the sun, looking ready to go. Um, so that, 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 that it's been it's done. It just needs it just needs hot commissioning. Okay, super perfect. So, but that could be anyhow the next weeks. So, I'd have, thought sometime, I'd have thought sometime towards the end of August. Mm -hmm. What we're doing already is we're now we're now beginning to plan a second phase of that um, solar project because clearly, at the at the current uh, diesel price, it, it mm -hmm. saves us so much money mm -hmm. if we can, if we can eat into that diesel usage and, and um, replace diesel at sort of fifty cents a kilowatt hour with solar at one and a half mm -hmm. cents a kilowatt hour. Mm -hmm. You know, you it just it just pays for itself very quickly. So um, yeah. we are very keen to do that. Yeah, super. Yeah, that makes really sense. Um, how far are then the three projects away from each other? Oh, the, uh, too far. Too um, far. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, Blanket is I think about 107. It's about a two-hour drive south of Bulawayo. Uh, Bilbo is is, a, is it's, it's 70 kilometers north of Bulawayo. But the road, the road needs upgrading, so it's not an easy drive. So far, far too far away for um, for those, those sorts of synergies. But what we'll probably do, <clears throat> we'll probably um, start to the scale of our operation is going to change enormously. And so we probably, to be as efficient as possible, we'll probably start now to to move a sort of a technical, create a technical center in Bulawayo, servicing okay. both Blanket Mine in the south and um, and Bilbo's in the north. Um, and then Marley Green is also further north as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, super. Last question. How did you come on the price for Bilbo's? Because you are um, giving out 5.123 million shares yeah. to that group. And that's a, a good 50 million US dollars uh, given yeah. the share price of today. Um, so how, how did you came on that? Basically, we, we it, it's very difficult it's very difficult for assets of this nature to look look at how much people paid for similar assets in different jurisdictions because mm -hmm. each asset is very different 
and each jurisdiction is very different. And so, frankly, it doesn't really help to inform the debate if you say, well, a similar asset in Australia went for that price, and a similar asset in, in Ghana went for that price, because this asset isn't in either Ghana or Australia, it's in Zimbabwe. You know, the way we did it, as, as I've outlined previously, we, we, we worked out how much we could afford to pay for it mm -hmm. to get the return that we believe we can get based on the feasible based on the feasibility study and our own work mm -hmm. so it really really comes down to um locking in a price that mm -hmm. work, works for us um now you know initially initially that price didn't work for vendors um, mm -hmm. so then they then pursued uh, um, other other options and then when those other options uh, fell away then they came back to um re-engage with us on our pricing basis so mm -hmm. um um we, we've done it. We, we, we've, we've done it. We, we're not interested. We're not interested in buying assets to increase the ounces, mm -hmm. and then hope just hope for the market re-rating. We're not interested yep. in. Yep. As I've said before, we buy assets with a view to optimizing the free cash flow per share, mm -hmm. and then hence in due, in due course maximizing the dividend. So that's the yep. only way to do it. Super, perfect. I love that. No, because if I calculate your resources, let's take only uh, measured and indicated, that's 2.555 million ounces. So we talk yeah. about $20 per ounce. And I think that's a fair price. Yeah, I mean, $20, $20 an ounce for M&I, we, um, we paid $4 million an ounce inferred at uh, Marley Green and our historic discovery cost of blanket has been about $3.50, $4 mm. an ounce. Yeah. Uh, so look, it reflects, it reflects the, the jurisdiction we're in, but I think, I think it's not just the size. It's not just the size of this asset and the scale, the scale of this asset. It, it's also that as part of doing this transaction, we will be getting the, the approvals we need from the Zimbabwean authorities to run this gold mine, just like you'd run any gold mine in any other country in the world, mm -hmm. where you can, you can move the money around, you can sell the gold, and you can, you can raise proper third-party Proper, proper bank debt and, and, a, and reach out to proper, proper equity investors. It, mm -hmm. so like a, it's, a real, it's a real coming of age, I think, mm -hmm. for, um, for the Zimbabwe gold industry if we get these approvals. Mm -hmm. Okay, super. Perfect. That sounds like a great game plan. Thank you very much, Mike. Um, where do you see, let's say, the time framing now? Obviously, you, are, you have closed the deal. That's all fine. Um, but now time framing wise, um, when do you see we will see the first gold pop? Okay, well, no, we've, you say we've closed the deal. We've signed the, we've signed the sale of oh, purchase. Yeah, signed the purchase. Now, there, there, are two, there are two big conditions precedent to fulfill. The first, the first is getting those government approvals. That are mm -hmm. second, that. The second is getting some more um, uh, meat on the, on the electricity supply situation. Mm -hmm. So we need a PPA and a, uh, an agreement to actually get that power through the grid to, to the plant. I'd ex I would hope those two main CP, CPs, conditions precedent, can be dealt with certainly by the end of the year. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, and then, and then, and then we would spend next year doing the feasibility studies that I've mentioned. So feasibility study on the the big bang approach or the two phased approach. Mm -hmm. uh, so that really takes you to the end of 2023, and at which point then we would um, evaluate which way we're going to go, either big bang or two two step, mm -hmm. and then raise, raise and then raise the money accordingly. So don't forget, we, it's, it's, to some extent, it's in our interest not to spin this out, but this is our interest to to make sure that we we've got our got our ducks ducks in a, in order and uh, ducks mm -hmm. in a row, mm -hmm. so that we've got the money the money in place at the right time to be able to fund this. Mm -hmm. Super, perfect. Thank you very much. All the best for this, Mark. Uh, I really like it. Uh, I like your approach for Zimbabwe. I always liked how you guys played Zimbabwe and how you did it. And I think the success gives you absolutely uh, the right for it. And uh, I look forward to my next dividend payment. Very simple. Well, it's, it's, it's next week. <laughs> next week. Exactly. Yeah, I love it. It helps me for my vacation. <laughs> yeah. okay. Super, Mike. Thank you very mm -hmm. much. All the best and talk soon to you. Thank you. Thanks for Thank you. Okay. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that was Mark Lehmann, the CEO of Caledonia Mining. And you heard it. Big things are going on here. They are just yeah, in the mode and signed uh, the agreement to buy the uh, Bilbo's um, yeah, 
project here in in uh, Zimbabwe, and uh, that would be a real big, big, big milestone for the company with approximately 170 ounces average gold production. Then in the future, two and a half million ounces measured and indicated already, uh, plus another half a million ounces in the inferred category. That is already really fantastic. They are doing now their own feasibility study, which should start then early next year. And uh, yeah, hopefully then by 2025, we see the first gold pour. And I like the conservative approach Caledonia's management is taking and um, they are not overstretching themselves nor overstretching their financial situation please don't forget blanket is a real cash cow it's adding a lot of cash every quarter giving us shareholders a beautiful quarterly dividend and i think this is exactly how you should do it fantastic investment and don't forget marley green is also in the run so this company could be within the next five years a 300,000 ounce gold producer uh, for a long long time and yeah, I think they did everything right. I'm a happy shareholder. I hope you'll be one too. So thanks for watching us and bye-bye from Austria today.